I am currently in the middle of a very long and technically complicated project that I don't want to mentally divest myself from yet, and it should be getting done soon. So today, I kind of want to do a really simple video, and uh, I'm going to do one on my Keychron K8 keyboard here. Now, this is a pretty simple keyboard. It has blue mechanical switches. It is both Bluetooth and wireless over USB-C and has been my go-to keyboard uh, here in the office and in some use cases at home. Now, I picked this particular keyboard for a few reasons. First off, the 87 key size is because it is the exact same width as my laptop, which means any laptop bag that this will fit in this will also fit in, and this gets me as many keys as I possibly can. I'm not a fan of losing all of the function keys and having the arrow keys crammed into here, so uh, that's not what I'm after. The other reason is because I was after hot swappable switches, and this model of this keyboard does. There are um, actually a bunch of these. This one is a Keychron K8G2. That's the full designation, which means that it is a white backlit keyboard with hot swappable blue switches. Now about that backlight, let me turn that up and then turn the other lights off. Now I didn't actually want a backlit keyboard, which is why I didn't get the fancy gamer RGB version, which is kind of unfortunate because that one can be QMK modded, but I didn't care about it. Uh, and this one was the least expensive model that ticked all the boxes that I wanted. However, the backlight has highlighted quite literally an issue with the keys that come on this keyboard. They are painted and when they get scratched, light shines through in areas that it should not. The escape key especially is feeling this around the edges where it tends to get worn and it's seemingly the paint is thinner. Now, like I mentioned, I don't look at the keys, so it actually doesn't really make that big of a difference to me if they get scratched and the light shines through in places. What does make a difference to me though is literally visible along the side. You see how there is a weird discoloration between the top and the side of the shift key and also the enter key there? That is because the paint is absorbing finger oil and changing texture. It kind of feels like a rubberized ThinkPad and I'm not really a huge fan of how these feel after they get broke in, let's say. And honestly, I wasn't a big fan of them when they were just the powdery texture either. So overall, I'm not really happy with these keys. Now, I mentioned one of my keyboard criteria was hot swappable switches. And that was because I was always planning on putting green switches in this thing. You kind of can't buy a keyboard with green switches uh, anymore, which is really annoying because I very much prefer these to that. At least I think so. Uh, there haven't been a lot of keyboards that have shipped with green switches, and this is the only one that I've experienced personally. This is a Razer Black Widow Ultimate, and it shipped with its own custom green key switches. Now, I really like how this thing feels, and these are much higher pressure, but they are Razer key switches in a Razer keyboard, so they're slightly different uh, from a more standard key switch like these Gaterons, so uh, I'm not totally sure that's what I want, but I'm pretty confident based on the specs. So I was thinking, I'm going to be replacing the switches on the keyboard anyway, so why not replace the keys themselves as well? So I decided to look back at all of the keyboards that I actually like, which obviously includes the IBM Model M, which is the greatest keyboard ever made. I will accept no arguments, but this is kind of already done for me, and I don't really want a beige modern keyboard. It's kind of a weird thing. I, I love beige keyboards, but this is what I want when I want a beige keyboard. So I kind of wanted something else. Enter the Selectric. Now, this did come in multiple different colors. We have black here. We have a lighter gray here. There may have been another lighter color than this, uh, in white, but I'm not sure, but there was definitely a brilliant blue. And I am well aware of this because it's kind of a thing for people to harvest these for their keys. And there's a very particular reason for that. Because the IBM Beam Spring used the same mounting mechanism. 
Now, the IBM Beam Spring means one thing in the keyboard collecting community, and that is um, money. They're ridiculously overpriced and expensive. Uh, I don't have one of those because I would only be interested in buying it with the complete terminal rather than just harvesting it alone. Well, terminal's not totally fair. The display writer came with one. But the Beam Spring does garner a lot of interest, which is why these exist. These are mass drop MT3 profile key switches, and these are designed to replicate the beam spring, which means they replicate the Selectric. So today, I'm going to be making my Keychron K8 a Selectric style keyboard. Now, you can get these keys in different sets with different amounts of keys included. Uh, depending on how big your keyboard is. But I figured if I'm getting any of these, I should get all of them. They, they're kind of weird. Uh, so this is a full keyboard set for 101 key keyboard, um, but it's still missing some keys or at least alternative keys. Like it has arrow keys in here. Yeah, here we go. There's uh, all four of them, but there's a different extra set you could buy that has these in red, which would be kind of nice. Are these? These are double shot. Whoa, that's that's cool. Um, but they're supposed to be really nice keys. Um, and they're plastic, so they're going to feel better than the stupid painted ones that came on the Keychron. So no matter what, I'm getting a step up here. But I'm really curious about these because the ones on the Keychron, they do have profile so they are uh raked around the arc of the keyboard but these ones are way more pronounced uh so and taller so this should be interesting but first we need to disassemble this thing uh so we can put in the new switches before we can really try these so let's start on that process all right before we can get started putting the switches in uh, we do need to remove all of the keys. All right, there we go. Wow, it's kind of weird. This thing is noticeably lighter without the keys on it. That means it's going to be noticeably heavier with the much bigger, thicker keys on there. So that's going to be interesting. Now I'm ready to get all in on uh, yoinking these key switches. So... I'm going to sit here and do that for a bit. All right. That is all of the keys removed. Now, I'm slightly curious here. It looks like you just remove some screws and then you can get underneath here. Uh, supposedly this keyboard has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in it. Ooh, I'm curious what it looks like. <laughs> Turn it on, <laughs> the keys on is uh, quite an experience there. Um, but I don't see the cell uh, under there. There's a little silver thing right there, but that, that can't be it. Uh, that doesn't seem big enough. So I'm kind of curious to maybe take off the top plate, and I presume that'll make it possible to see what's going on in there. Ah, there we go. Just get it up over the ports. Oh, that's a big battery, that's why. Okay, so it's a big flat cell. Um, it is glued in, so it's not really easy to see. Uh, but it just goes straight to a fairly standard battery connector there, it looks like. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, I am ready to start putting in the green switches here. Uh, before I did that though, I just wanted to really quickly show them up close. So uh, I have both original Gateron switches. So uh, Gateron is the brand that Keychron ships these with. Uh, it probably doesn't really matter. I was actually recommended uh, Kali box switches, uh, some navies or yellows in place of these. Uh, but I really wanted to go with the greens. So the blues are a 60, uh, is it gram or newton meter? Uh, it's one of the units of measurements, uh, force to actuate the key, whereas the greens are 80. 
So they are 33% more. And it is noticeable, it's quite noticeable. And I really like a heavy keyboard. These green switches should actually be heavier than the Model M. Uh, and I really like that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having these in this keyboard. Um, like I said, with the Razer Black Widow, I really liked that. So yep, that's what I'm going with. So uh, I'm gonna be going slow here, trying to make sure I don't bend the super thin little pins and that I get this right. So uh, yeah, I didn't know, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet. This is my first time working on a keyboard like this. So yeah, this is all a bit new to me. Also, just for the record, the panel mount uh, plastic latches on these suck uh, and they break really easily. I think a lot of those blue switches lost their little tabs. So yeah, that's a thing. I got one free key switch, yeah! But that's it, uh, this is now a green converted keyboard. I'm quite happy with that. Next up is putting the Selectric inspired uh, keys in there. Now, this is kind of the accessories um, in a way because there are different options for the different keys. You can be super boring and have all the keys be black, I think. Yeah, or you can have some that are colors, and uh, I'm definitely going colors. Now, the first thing is, I have no idea how standard this is, and uh, it looks like it will fit. Okay. I was concerned about that, so that makes me happy. <laughs> um, from here, though, we're going to go ahead and do this. Ooh. Oh, wow, that's curved and tall. Ah, that is a thing. Wow, look at how... <laughs> It's <laughs> super pronounced off of there. Holy moly. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get crack a lack in here. These keys are so tall. They really amplify the stability issues of the switch. That was part of why I was recommended the Cali box switches that they're supposed to be more stable, but, uh, that'll probably be fine. Uh, very, very noticeable though. Okay, I, I hate that I'm going through all this effort and I'm now actually considering that I may go to the other ones if they really are more stable now. All right, I'm gonna opt for whatever fun colored keys I can when I can. So uh, I'm double checking, there isn't a fun colored backspace. So I'm not gonna do that yet so there's that um all right then i'm feeling like putting the big red enter on right now because it's pretty and calling out to me yes uh we'll get to well you know what let's do that right now <laughs> control all right so they have the hipster option for putting control in place of caps lock now, this is for people who want to feel superior <laughs> because they think like, oh, control belongs there because control was on there on terminals because generally they didn't have control keys that far down. Um, and that's because on typewriters like this, it's shift, lock, and then tab. Um, and you just, you don't have control and alt keys like this. <sighs> I am not going to put this here for that reason, I'm making that clear. I am gonna put it there though, because uh, I don't have a caps lock key. Uh, I rebind that to the uh, meta key. All right, let's go ahead and add that row of keys. They're all ready to go. I would also, if I can get QMK on here, in addition to binding these to what they say they are, I would bind that to the meta key, because I much prefer that You know, it feels like cheating having them lay all these out in rows like this makes it easy. I clean so many vintage keyboards that I'm so used to having to put them all in haphazardly. Have the layout memorized. We have a variety of colored keys here, although we only have green shifts. Is that what I'm seeing? Oh, well, okay. Then 
no <laughs> variety for me. It's kind of going to be what I was going to do anyway. Uh, I was thinking it would be RGB for the different rows, but I guess that's what they were thinking too. Um, so no being clever for me, I'm just following along <laughs> with what they were always going to do. We are very close to done here though. Oh, there were two sizes of space bars. <laughs> well, I'm glad I put the right one in first so I didn't freak out. Ooh, I like there's some blank keys. Profile's gonna be heavily dependent. So, and that's it. Wow, that's a lot of extra keys, but I did get the full size set uh, so that I could potentially, if I decide I want a full sized keyboard uh, to travel with, I can move these over to that. Although, after having put any of these into the uh, stems. Wow, they are snug. I don't recommend moving them around a whole lot. Jeez. All right, let's try it. Hmm. I absolutely love the keys themselves. Um, there are so many things about these that I like. You know what, let me get the computer out and try it with that. Now, one thing I'll say here, um, let's actually do a comparison with the selector because that's like kind of the whole point here. So here is an interesting thing to note. These keys are about the same color as these are, um, but the other keys are much closer to the different brighter selectric keys that I have there. Um, so it's kind of a mix between the two, but these do a pretty good job. Um, they're not as round all around. These are way smoother. Um, it's, not, it's possible that it's just because it's been used, but I think it's actually the mold and then the gloss. Like these are not shiny. These are shiny. I was really hoping to get that kind of texture, uh, but I did not. Um, and then the legends on this aren't as large as this and they are completely different. Um, they, you know, it's, there isn't a way of copywriting a font, um, but you could potentially copyright the artistic implementation into a keyboard. So I'm not sure if they could fully do that. I doubt IBM would have come after them if they just copied that font, but eh. Um, but yeah, I am going to bring my laptop over here and play with these a little bit to see what I think of them. Okay, I am gonna try doing a little bit of work here. Um, using the keyboard. Yeah, the project I'm working on, it's uh, cloning a PCB and that's taking a long time to do. Mostly done at this point, but there's a bunch of little fine details I'm still nailing down, so. Uh... Okay, did a fair bit here. Uh, I really like it. Um, I meant to also come back over to here and try this. So let me just do a little bit here. Okay, so it's that. This is better. That I like that more. I like that way more. Um, and I think the uh, heft of these keycaps is also somewhat muting the switches because <laughs> there is a definite tone change in this keyboard now, which I was not expecting and is kind of cool. So uh, I'm enjoying that aspect of it uh, for sure. All right, uh, I just uh, finished editing the video up to this point using just this keyboard uh, and I wanted to give my final closing thoughts on it after that. Uh, so I had much more seat time with it because some of my thoughts have changed. Um, I really don't like how much more concave the home row indicator keys are than the other ones and there isn't a non-concave option included with it or for sale with the 
extras key pack so there's actually no way to fix that so that part is a little annoying it's just because of how extreme it is like i feel like it really it doesn't need to be that much and honestly i don't even need that it's really like a non-problem old keyboards a lot of times did not have that so eh. um and then the other thing my other real complaint is that i think they made this too aggressive here uh, like you'll notice these keys go up above the start of those keys whereas these ones are all kind of like a normal arc here i feel like these they curved the whole alpha numeric section just a bit too much it's not a deal breaker but uh it's just something that i'm noticing the more i use it but overall i really like this whole setup i have now uh, this is connected to my computer over Bluetooth, so I can pick it up and move it around. Uh, this keyboard in particular has really terrible Bluetooth, though. Um, although, I'm not sure. It could just be all keyboards that have that. Uh, I haven't messed around too many Bluetooth keyboards because it's not optimal. Uh, but I get lots of repeated characters sometimes and uh, drops out and then has to reconnect. Although, I find it mostly happens at home, so I may just have high 2.4 gigahertz congestion here. Um, not as much at the office, I think. So that could be what's going on, because uh, I do have more problems with that here. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, overall, the green switches are so much better. I really like those. Uh, I have my Industrial Model M right here that I recently did a video on, and I'm pressing keys <laughs> here as I do this. Uh, and that's what I normally use here still this is plugged in i mean you can see the light turn on when i turn on numlock there which is of course missing on this but yeah uh definitely i'm very happy with the green switches uh being put into here and i'm overall satisfied with the keycaps they're just really expensive uh to have the little problems that i do with uh them so i feel like i'm going to mention them because yeah now, something else I will mention about this keyboard that it's it's a novelty keyboard. This was way too much money to spend on a keyboard. Um, and I do somewhat feel silly for having done this, but I kind of really wanted this look. And like I mentioned, it was just a bunch of little things that were adding up. I was going to be buying new switches for it anyway. I really did not like the keycaps that were on there for just how they felt. It was actually not. A pleasant experience so I was always going to change it so it was just kind of a creeping commitment of costs adding up so yeah uh let's break it down because you know I want to feel a little guilty about this because it's kind of dumb um the base keyboard is 90 for this model of Keychron K8 um I actually got it for 70 so I saved some there the switches were about 40 dollars I didn't get a price break on that and then the keycaps, um, this set is $130, which is just stupid. Um, you are paying about a dollar a key, maybe, um, because it's a 101 set with alternate colors. So, you know, a dollar a key doesn't feel too bad. I actually managed to get it for 90. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this, this was a refurbished Amazon listing. I have no idea how that works, but... Yeah, so I'm 70, 30, I'm $200 into this keyboard, which is kind of crazy. But I bought this, the base keyboard in January. And the thing was is that I got it for the 70 and it was if I actually liked it and I used it after a period of time, then I would get the green switches and put some effort into making it a keyboard that I enjoyed more. I didn't expect to really dislike the caps of themselves after that time uh i had considered getting unlabeled keys because they would be cheap and i like the look of that and i don't really need to see them anymore so i was thinking about that but this is kind of more my style uh cosmetically so i quite like that <laughs> it's just so stupidly overpriced so yeah i don't recommend it but i was kind of just working my way towards this the whole time so uh yeah anyway that is it um i don't reckon I, I just can't bring myself to recommend anything here um because it's also overpriced when you could get something more affordable that you'll enjoy just as much um so i, I like it this is not an endorsement <laughs> but that is it for now uh if you enjoyed 
this video about building a really stupid keyboard, then you may want to subscribe because I've done a few other keyboard videos like that Model M1. Um, if you want to help support the channel, I promise I won't be building any more stupid keyboards like this because this was a one-off. This is now done, and as long as it keeps working, I will keep using it. And even if the base stops working, I will move the keys to another one because that was an investment. Uh, but anyway, that is it for the moment, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.